Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and welcome back to Stellaris. Now I covered Stellaris a couple years ago when it first came out for about 25 or 26 episodes. Uh, really liked Stellaris 1.0 when it came out, uh, but there were some problems with it. There were some things that just weren't in the game that I had wished there were. And two years later, with a bunch of expansion packs, there's a brand new expansion pack coming out called Apocalypse, which in introduces world destroyers and mega structures and all kinds of stuff. But the most important thing is, and the reason I'm actually coming back and playing it again, is because Stellaris is revamping the entire game from the ground up and is being called the Cherry Update, also known as Stellaris 2.0. All the systems are being reworked from the ground up to be incorporated into the uh, main game with Apocalypse being the reason uh, that it's all happening. And with that, any people who have never played Stellaris, now is the time to jump in. And those who have been away for a while, like myself, now is the time to jump in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own race, my own species. I think I'm going to recreate the Volpine Sovereignty like I did before. Uh, and we're going to just jump in and play and have a good time. Stellaris is was one of my favorite games back then. and. I can only imagine how awesome Stellaris is now. Um, so, as you can see, they create a bunch of pre-made species for you here, but we're going to be making our own so we can experience what it's like to create your own empire to launch into this game with. So, first things first, what are we going to make? As you can see, these are all just pictures. We're going to go Mammalian and we're going to go Vulpine again. I thought about going Machine, but I really am unsure if this is the right way to go, only because I don't know if Machine means I don't get to mess with AI all that much. One of the things I really want to do is mess with the development of AI and robots, and I, if I am a machine, does that lock me out or automatically unlock all of that stuff for me? I'm not sure. So I'm going to go Mammalian and recreate my Vulpine Sovereignty. We're going to head next. Um, we are we are the Vulpines. Vulpines. And I don't know, like, just Vulpine as our adjective. Uh, well, next, uh, this is what kind of names do we want? Does there are mammalian names? Barum de Thrag, Viripium? Yeah, so this is, so basically this will, this will create uh, choosing this will basically how your ships and your buildings and all that stuff and planets are named. Like if I was a machine, they could be named Machine Fleet 1, Machine Fleet 2, Security Echelon 1, Security Echelon 2. Very, you know, mechanical, binary, as you would expect. I think for me, though, I'm going to go with Mammalian... Mammalian 2 is a little bit more flowery, and I imagine our Vulpine folk are very, um... I don't want to say they're wordy, but they're good with, th with their language. Uh, Next up, we're going to be start picking our perks, or our traits rather. So these are going to be our traits that are inherent in our empire, within our species. Uh, very easy to understand once you see it. So Thrifty, for instance, uh, you, it shows it on the left. Thrifty means we get plus 15% energy credits. Members of the species are instinctively economical and are always looking to make a good profit. Uh, whatever corners need cutting. Uh, so basically, if we choose this, it's going to take two away from our points and one of the max amount of traits we're allowed to pick. So we have two trait points and we're allowed a, a max of five. So if I choose Thrifty, I'm out of points, but I can still choose four traits. So what I want to do then is go find one that's going to give me two points, like so, or one point, a minus two or minus one, and then I can go ahead and start picking other points. Now, one of the ones I did pick back then, and I'm going to pick again just because it, it fits with that, is non-adaptive. What this means is every planet that is uh, not like our own for instance if we if we come from a continental style world or a frozen world any planet that is not frozen or continental we're gonna have a 10 percent harder time adapting to it and, and learning to live there we're so set in our ways uh as a species that going anywhere new is difficult it's a little bit difficult to play with that trait but i did pretty well last time i'm gonna stick with it other things um that i i really like uh is where was the one that i chose before there was a few that I chose before that I can't fully remember. What is this? Extremely adaptive. Incapable. Okay, so these these get put at the bottom when they're incapable to, of dealing with the other ones. Um, I actually really like quick learners. Uh, this is going to give us a 25% leader experience gain. So uh, our presidents, our governors, our scientific officers, they'll level up faster. And I, I always find foxes to be, you know, they're nimble, they're quick, they're sh they're shifty, uh, that kind of thing. Um, what else do I want from them? Thrifty might be good, more energy credits. Intelligent might be really good as well. Uh, we get 10% extra output on everything. So it would go along with the fact that we are quick learners and intelligent, uh, if that's what we want to take. 
And then we can do natural engineers, natural site, uh, natural sociologists, rapid breeders could be good. It might be good to offset the fact that we're not good at adapting by breeding very quickly. Uh, this species reproduces at a very rapid rate, increasing population growth. Could be good. Leader level cap plus one. We're just naturally talented. Why don't we just go ahead and take that? So we're talented, intelligent, and quick learners, but we're just not very adaptive. Now, I could take another negative trait, uh, but that's not going to leave us with any traits to pick. We only have one spot left. If we want to min-max, what we would do is take something like... I don't know, weak maybe army damage for minus for or sedentary, which is kind of rough. Um, but then we could get two points to play and maybe pick up a little bit of a stronger one. But I like the idea of us being quick, nimble, and talented from there. So that's good. We'll go there. Next up, we're going to pick the kind of world that we want. So our star name is going to be Lilat. We're from the Lilat system. And we're going to be from Corneria. Um, I think we're going to just take wet climate. It just, it depends on the kind of world we want. So we got three different types of dry worlds, three different types of wet worlds, and three type, different types of frozen worlds. I think we're going to stick with wet worlds, probably continental. We'll take a look. So if we go here with an ocean world, oceans cover more than 90% of the surface with scattered islands making up the remaining percentage. Usually ocean worlds like this don't have a lot of space for us to grow. Uh, there's not a lot of islands. There's, it's 90% it's ocean. So building and sustaining an ocean world is difficult. And you kind of take that in consideration when you're starting to see other worlds that you want to colonize. Uh, other than that, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I like the idea of a tropical world almost, um, but I think continental is what we're going to stick with for now because it just, it makes the most sense to me. Um, we don't really think, you know, frozen worlds, not that big a deal. Uh, and dry worlds, I mean, you know, there's desert foxes and the like, so maybe we could go desert world, but, um, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go with continental world. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Next up, it's just, uh, city appearance. How do you want your city to appear? I think for now, um, a million city makes the most sense, and that's fine. Okay, so this looks a little different than it did last time, though I don't know if much has changed. Basically, the next thing is our government. We're looking at the kind of government that we're going to hold here. Um, the idea... Uh, you'll see what I... It, it looks a little convoluted, and it can seem convoluted right away. Um, but what we're going to do... What is this? Gr Gestalt consciousness. It disables the tutorial. Cannot use democratic, oligarchic, dictatorial, or imperial authority. Rulers are immortal. Native pops are not affected by happiness and will not join factions. Native pops cannot survive in non-Gestalt consciousness empires. Cannot use, can use the no retreat war doctrine. Okay, so this is like hard mode or a different type of play style. We're not going to go with that. Um, we've got three ethic points and what we're going to do is we're going to pick an ethic ethics for our government, the type of government we want. And then we're going to pick a very specific kind of government that we want. And then the civics that go along with that government. It's easy once you kind of look at it. So what do we consider ourselves here? Uh, do we consider ourselves fat pacifists? I kind of see the Vulpines as very scientific. They're incredibly intelligent. And in doing that, they, they rapidly advanced uh, themselves through technology, which might be why they're not really good at adapting to other worlds because they are just, they haven't had time to adapt. They've, they've sped along their technology so quickly and so fast that they are in space well before they maybe should have been in space. Maybe there's a little alien influence that got them into space a little bit quicker, rose them up. Uh, so I think we're going to go for that. Something that's a little bit more scientific. Um, so one of the, so we've got a bunch of things to choose from. We've got militarists. Uh, we've got Xenophobe, which is just not going to be good for against other aliens. Uh, Egalitarian, which gives us more um, faction influence and consumer good cost. Um, cannot use autocratic, autocratic government forms, allows utopian living standards. Cannot have impoverished living standards for full citizen species. Interesting. Uh, materialist, uh, robot upkeep and research speed. See, this is cool. I might take that. Um, basically allows academic privilege. Living standards cannot use AI outlawed policy. So if we take materialist AI is something that we can't outlaw. We want it, right? That's something that's going to have to happen and cannot use robotic workers outlawed policy. So when we get robotic workers, we're going to, we can't outlaw them. If we go fanatic version of this, instead of it costing one point, it costs two, but we get double the bonus. So we could be go fanatic materialists. And then do we really want to go pacifists? 
authoritarian spiritualists can build temples hollowed worlds cannot use full ai rights policy so we will be able to have ai if we decide to go spiritualist we'll have be able to have ai but we can't give them a full right they will always be seen as beneath us um they don't have a soul i kind of like the idea of going almost fanatic materialist authoritar authoritarian but I think I'm going to go xenophile. The idea of we're fanatic materialists, but we also are so ravaged, so thirsty for knowledge that we want more alien species to intermingle with us. That being said, uh, so this would be if we have gestalt ethics, hive mind and machine learning. Ooh, that's cool. That might be a really fun one to go with, actually. But we have to have Gestalt. So if we don't want it, we'd have to go like this. And then we could do Machine Intelligence and whatnot. So we don't actually have to go Machine. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit more difficult for us, I think, overall. We're like Machine Mammals. Fanatic Materialist. Okay. Fanatic Materialist Xenophile. And then that, then we want to pick our authority. Are we a democratic state? Holds an election every 10 years uh, to select a new ruler. Are we oligarchic? Holds an election every 20 years for a new ruler. A dictatorial? Holds an election upon the ruler's death. Imperial? Upon ruler death, a designated successor becomes a new ruler. Or that it. So if we go democratic, there used to be more choices. This is actually a little bit thinned out. I like the idea of being democratic. Um, or at the very least, oligarchic. If we're oligarchic... We're a small group of individuals that hold all political power, where if this is a, a direct or a democracy, rather. We have an executive committee or a direct democracy. Why don't we go oligarchic? We have an, an executive committee of intelligent people. We're materialists, we're fanatic materialists, um, and we're xenophiles, but we're still ruled oligarchic. So the next thing we choose is our civics. What is the civics of our government? Uh, and I'm doing this all kind of off of an, a roleplay perspective. We're foxes, um, we're volt pines, um, we're intelligent, we're materialistic, we're, we're thirsty for knowledge. So, what's next? Um, aristocratic elite. Governor recruitment cost minus 50. Empire leader capacity plus 4. Corporate dominion. We are not xenophobic and we are, we are oligar oligarchic. What does this do? Trading hubs produce one additional energy. Starts with the space trading technology already unlocked. Unlock ship types, private colony ships. Ooh. This society is dominated by a mega corporation that has completely supplanted the role of the state. Ooh, I kind of like that. Uh, the idea that we can open up trading hubs way earlier and they're, they're more valuable to us is, is makes sense. Um, Corvée system. This system considers it the absolute right of the state to decide where its citizens live and work. Eh, I mean, that's useful. Edict costs minus 20%, cutthroat politics. Core sector systems plus two. This society is renowned for its efficiency. Not only do the mag trains run on time, but the colossal bureaucratic, bureaucratic apparatus required to run it in a stellar nation has been greatly streamlined. So we're efficiently bureaucratic. Environmentalist, 50% consumer goods, which I guess consumer good cost is minus 15%. Free haven, we have to be xenophile. Migration attraction is 50%. So other species will want to move to our planets more often, which can be good and bad. Functional architecture, 15% building cost. Okay, life's seeded. What is this? This society has evolved in a paradise possibly designed just for them. This goes with the idea that maybe we were raised up a little bit. Life seeded. Homeworld is a Gaia world. Wow. Habit, uh, habitability preference is set to Gaia world preference, making other types of planets undesirable. Ooh. Okay, does that have government? So this means we really only want to live on Gaia worlds and every other world that's not a Gaia world is problematic. This is, um, I actually remember them talking about the video. This is for people who want to do like a one planet challenge type deal. Uh, this is kind of how you want to go about it. I don't want to do that. Mechanist is some degree materialist, does not have government civic. Okay, yep, we have everything that we need. Um, the start the game with two pops being robots and with the technology to build more robot upkeep reduced by 5%. The society has been preoccupied with the idea of metallic automatons since the early steam age. Although many said it could not be done, 
The first true robots left the assembly lines long before even rudimentary spaceflight was achieved. I like that. It goes the idea of these hyper-intelligent foxes blasting through technology. Uh, so I'm going to take Mechanist for now. We can always move it. Shadow Council. Ooh. Has democratic oligarchic. Unbeknownst to its own citizens, this society is actually manipulated from behind the scenes by a secretive Shadow Council. Appearances must be kept, but the tyranny of the majority should also be guarded against. After all, what if the fools vote for the wrong candidate? Election influence cost. So I can influence the elect the elections at a little bit less of a cost, more or less. Less of a penalty. Technocracy. Research alternatives, plus one. <coughs> To maximize efficiency, this society is governed by a government according to the principles of science and rationality. The personal whims of an ignorant and dangerously unqualified political elite must not be allowed to interfere. Yeah, I think we're going to take that just because it makes sense roleplay-wise. So we are mechanist, technocracy, oligarchic, fanatic materialist, xenophiles. So we're a science... Uh, directorate. Oh, I love how it changed, actually, as we picked things. We're a science directorate. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, so that's what we are. Cool. Next is uh, Advisor Voice. The only way to make peace. Okay, let's see here. La, see, th okay, yeah. let's see here. La, see, the lower limit of. Da, 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 da. Oh, exponent A. And carry the one. Okay, we good? All right. So there we go. <laughs> uh, that that's fine. What is a single self-destruct sequencing? God, that's cool. Okay, All right, that's... next. Um, empire name: Galactic Vulpine Technocracy, and the adjective is vul uh, Vulpinin. Uh, sure, that looks great to me. Next. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Back up, back up, back up. We kind of went uh, crazy. Uh, oh, right. We got to design our flags. Paradox, ornate, human, pointy, round. Um, What about ornate? I think ornate would be the most. I don't remember the flag I made for the first one. Zoological. Ooh, I like that honeycomb thing, even though it doesn't really make sense for us. That doesn't really make sense either. This might work. And I'm thinking, like, what if we go orange and blue, because that just makes the most sense with that there. And we can kind of, like, oh, yeah, we can set the background. Ooh. Yeah, let's go with that. I like it. All right, there we go. Galactic Vulpine Technocracy. Oh, we got to pick our ships. Ship appearance, anyway. I like the idea, I mean, these are mammalian ships, but I like the idea that we have, like, cooler-looking ships. Technology-driven avian ships look neat. Actually, yeah, mammalian ships is fine, too. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, our first ruler will be Mathis. He's male. Director General. Air title. Doesn't really have one. Color variants. Is there pale and nerdy? There I am. Pale. And what room does he stand in? No, no candles. That's like, do you see the shackles back there? No shackles. How about our clothing? Something... Can we have, like, technology and fancy? No, not really. I guess that's as close as we can get to. That's kind of technological, but not not as technological as it like. How many rooms are there? 20. Let's go with... Yeah, that's. I mean, that's about as technology as we can get right there. Galactic Vulpine Technocracy. We're eager for, for knowledge, and hopefully it works out for us. There we go. That's it. We're quick learners, intelligent. We're going to save it, and we're going to hit done. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the map. So we'll go with a, I guess, a medium map. I think we just leave it as is. Two of the AI are going to get advanced starts. Um, Fallen Empires, one to two. I guess we can just randomize it. If we put it here, is it anywhere between one and three fallen empires? Sure, let's have fun with it. Marauder empires. So this is new. Uh, Marauder empires are roaming, angry people who are just want to kill you all the time. Everything else is fine. Difficulty, I'm going to leave on normal for now. Dif uh, oops. Yeah, I'm going to leave it on. Wow, really? Is that many? Hopefully, yeah, I'm going to leave it on normal. Everything else, planet, empire placement, clusters, random. 
advanced neighbors. Yeah, we'll leave this as it is. Iron Man mode is going to be off. I'm going to be safe scumming if I need to. Sure. All right. Let's jump in. And welcome to Stellaris, the galactic vulpine technocracy. In the eons since the first primitive vulpine communities took shape in the meadows and forests of Corneria, our civilization has spread and prospered. Through scientific progress, we have managed to stamp out the superstitions that ruled the minds of our ancestors. As reason and rational thought spread among our people, the inefficient nation states that we had until then organized ourselves into were disbanded. And a council of our most accomplished scientists was gathered to rule in their stead. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane Network, the finest minds of the galactic Vulpine technocracy have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. You might notice, if you are familiar with Stellaris, uh, that before you got to had a choice of one of three different hyperspace travels, that doesn't exist anymore. They're not doing that anymore. Uh, and I think that's a good thing, and we'll talk about why when it matters. But I think it's going to, basically, I think it's going to create more strategic um, decision-making amongst players, which is important. So let us begin. Greetings, Director. Hello. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence developed by the finest minds of our civilization to serve as your advisor. I shall endeavor to perform my duties with the utmost efficiency. We're going to go with a full tutorial just because I forget some things. And if I know it, I'll just speed through it so we don't have to worry about it. But I don't want to miss something important. So let's go full An tutorial. excellent decision. You will Thanks, good to know. A star Empire can be a daunting task. Yes. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is the first mission is to fully survey a neighboring star system. I have added it as an entry to the situation log. To access it, click on the situation log button on the left section of the top bar or press F3. <laughs> Um, so we are paused right now and we can take a look at the map. I can go over the map a little bit and talk about what you're looking at here because it is kind of overwhelming. So we've got our contacts over here. Um, we've got our situation log the situation over here. Log displays a list. We're going to ignore that for now, which is going to show all things that we've got going on. There are going to be quests and storylines and stuff that pop up as we explore the galaxy. And this is where it's going to keep it uh, in track. And the we're gonna victory screen lists certain conditions that we can strive to fulfill to ensure that the legacy... <laughs> There's different victories as well. Dominion, domination victory, conquest victory, federation victory, which we'll get to over time. Um, we've also got our technology, technology tree, is where? Uh, which is going to show our scientists and what they're currently researching. And then we have more over here, which is all of our other stuff like planets and sectors, policy and edicts, factions. We'll get to that when it matters. Right now, uh, we are also looking at over here our resources. So these are, if you've played any of the, what do you call it, the um, games from Paradox before, this is very similar to that. In fact, if you've played any Paradox games, I think it'll be pretty quick for you to understand what you're looking at here. So energy credits is basically our money. Uh, minerals is our, our building resources. Food is the resources being used on planets. Um, our influence is, is basically a special currency that we're going to be able to use to influence politics and other types of diplomacy. Over here is unity. Um, unity is, is used to unlock new traditions, which I don't think I know too much about. That might be from an expansion pack. And then over here, all of our research points. Um, as these, we're going to be spending these to research different things in our within our within our empire. Um, over here, we have directly controlled systems under my very specific control, Mathis. Uh, eventually, we'll have governors dealing with other things as our empire expands. Our naval capacity, we have three out of 20 fleets right now. And our star base capacity, we can have up to three. We only have one right now. And then over here is our strategic resources we have none of. This is our starting system. Here we are. And we can go to our galactic view by doing this. And if we zoom all the way out, this is the map we're going to be playing on. All these lines are our hyperlanes. And we are right now are just this tiny little baby system. And our borders are right here uh, where we can manage. We have uh, our lilac star. We have... Ooh, we zooming in. It makes noises. Ooh, look how... The game is gorgeous, by the way. We have a couple of things. Mining stations are used to extract the minerals and strategic resources of the object they orbit. So this thing's mining energy off the planet. 
Military fleet We've got a military fleet. To protect fleet. our emerging empire from threats or to expand our glorious rule through force of arms. Yep. If we so wish. Our current navy size is limited, but it can be increased by researching new technologies, which we'll worry about later. We've got another planet over here. Uh, Jalita, not habitable at all, but it's got a couple science points that we could actually do. Corneria is our this home is our planet. Home world and the capital of our empire. The planet summary screen, which we are currently looking at, provides an overview of the planet's important statistics. Right. So we can take a quick look here at what we're getting here. We're getting seven credits here, nine uh, minerals, one unity, uh, two, one, one. As far as research is concerned, we have no edicts active on this planet. Our current governor is Governor Barim Den, Del, Den Telnik. He is producing a plus two pop source, plus two percent building speed, and a clear blocker of minus two percent. Um, all this will be valuable to know on the here we see a visual representation of this planet's surface divided into tiles this tab is only visible on colonies and surveyed worlds that are habitable each pop occupies a single tile which means that there can never be more pops on a planet than there are free tiles easy enough to understand right and you can see our population here and what they're working on um, and we've got two robot populations here as well they're robotic they're not ai they're just robots uh but that's important to know uh, all these areas that have this yellow and black, like, caution signs, these can be used after we've cleared them out with the right technology. Right now, they just can't be used. We have an industrial wasteland and sprawling slums, probably from a previous war uh, beforehand. What is this? We can zoom in. And this is a camera, I guess. This Armies. This is where we manage all ground forces on this planet. The upper portion of this view is divided into three sections. The top section represents the orbital space above the planet. The middle section is the atmosphere, and the bottom section is the surface. That's new, I think, uh, since last time I played. Not new necessarily to 2.0 or Apocalypse, but new since I played. Um, that it has these three different things. That's kind of cool. Uh, the armies here are raised here. And by cl uh, clicking recruit in the bottom right, a limited number of defense armies are produced automatically by your planetary capital building, as well as any additional stronghold buildings that are present and manned by a pop. Cool. Easy enough. So if we wanted to recruit, we could grab them. Um, then we've got all these other here that we can manage. But we're going to leave them there. We don't really need to worry about it. This actually, our home planet is actually orbiting a giant, I assume a gas giant, which has some resources. All right. Uh, then we've got another planet over here. Uh, we've got Gandara over here, which has two mineral resources. We've got Eldetha, Aldara, and Nadira. we got a lot of planets that are kind of useless. We also have something over here. A uh, barren world that we have not done anything with either. And then, ooh, do we have something that's inhabitable over here? Toxic world. Nope. Barren world. Nope. We might be able to terraform these at a later date, but for now, all of this is just completely, completely useless. So, uh, what we want to do if we hit uh, F3. Oh, yeah, physics research. We need to set up research. Uh, so, let's get some research going. What do we want? 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 Um, what is this? Power generation. This technology will lead to further advancements in several different fields. So basically, we have to choose research for our scientists to go through. And every time you choose a research, it's, it's randomly generated. At least it used to be. I assume it still is. It randomly generates four different um, researches you can choose from. Not randomly generates as in the, the, the actual research itself is random, but it pulls from a pool of, of things that you can research and presents four randomly to you. Um, so right now, what we've got on our physics, uh, physics researcher, we get a physics lab, which would give us um, two science, one mechanics, one re engineering, and one society. Could be good. Uh, we could go fusion reactor, which is going to unlock a bunch of other things for us to research, and it's going to be, uh, I think, lead to weapons and stuff. Energy storage capacity mark two unlocks planet power plant two, which is going to be useful. And assistant research allows the science ships to assist with the research of a colony. I think right now, I'm just going to grab this. At 640, it's the most expensive, but I'm going to grab it early on. Society. I am thinking early on. Hydroponic farms, too, maybe a little early. Monthly unity plus five could be very good. And additional edicts would be good. Off-world trading company unlocks starbase building. I think this is what we get actually unlocked early because we are a technocracy that's uh, open to, to aliens kind of thing. Or Biolab 1, which could be very, very valuable. Why don't we grab Biolab 1? Let's just get that because that's going to be necessary. 
And then some other stuff over here under the uh, engineering tree. Corvettes build speed 25%, engineering facility 1, mining network 2, or afterburners. I think engineering facility, any, the, the earlier we can get our engineering and biolab and all that stuff up and running, the better. So let's go ahead and grab that. And that's going to be that. So the next thing we want to do, now that that's done, is survey. That, so what we need to do is we need to explore our neighboring system. To do this, select our science ship, ship either by clicking on the ship itself or by selecting the vessel in the outliner which is going to be over here. Uh, then I'll click on the survey button in the fleet interface, open the galaxy map, and select a non-surveyed system with a hyperlink connection. So uh, let's go ahead and grab our science ship right here. This is our science ship. It is our science which ship. Which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in a star system. A planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. Our home system has already been surveyed, so we should focus on our, our efforts elsewhere. With the science ship selected, open the galactic map, uh, right-click on a star neighboring system, and then, okay, so we're going to do this, and we got two, we got a bunch of places we can go. It doesn't really matter where we choose. Over here is like this ni neat little kind of clump, so we're going to go ahead and right-click on this and just hit survey. And what we're going to see is we're going to unpause it now, and our, our starship, there he goes, is going to head out. To survey, and I just kind of want to watch him. To overcome the vast distances that separate star systems, our scientists have developed the hyperdrive. We certainly have. This device permits travel at speeds far exceeding that of light between systems connected by hyperlanes. Travel along a hyperlane is extremely fast, but interstellar movement is restricted along the paths of the galactic hyperlane network. Safely entering hyperspace is only possible at the edge of the system beyond the uh, destabilizing effects of the star's gravity well. So, yeah, I want to watch this. Uh, let's go ahead and speed it up a little bit. Okay, he's going around to unknown space. Good luck, science officer. There he goes. He's, he's, he's spooling up the drive. Any minute. There he goes. Boom. And if we hit M... Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Heiser system. A rift in the very fabric of space-time has formed here, creating a wormhole that our scientists speculate may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the second wormhole is located, this could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately, this wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessels foolish enough to pass through it would be ripped apart in seconds. If I can only somehow stabilize it. So that's huge that we immediately find ourselves with a wormhole in the very first system. Because there's only like one to three of these at max on the entire map. So grabbing this star system... And securing it and locking it down as soon as possible is probably what we want to do. So he's going to go off and do his thing. Uh, he's going to start uh, doing some research there. While that's at the... While that's going, why don't we start mining out a little bit here? So we got you, and we'll go ahead and click, right-click on here. Can I not build? All right. Well, we'll just wait. Maybe they're gonna they're gonna give me something here in a little bit. So let's speed up a little bit. He's gonna fly in and he's gonna start. He's basically gonna hit every single planet, so we know what's. As an astute observer may already have noticed, find out what's habitable handled. planets are divided into a number of surface tiles. Tiles can generate resources, but we yeah. will need planetary buildings to get the most out of them. So right now, none of these are habitable planets. What we could do is set up a space outpost over here anyway. Uh, so we can do some things with that eventually. Well done. The first survey of a star system beyond our own has been completed. We now have access to planetary data that the astronomers on our home world could only dream of a mere generation ago. We may want to consider building a second science ship. This would double the speed at which we can survey our galactic neighborhood. Okay, so let's go ahead and situa situation log updated. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop this open and we have a couple things we can do here. Uh, we're going to build a second tutorial, planetary buildings. Um, what we need to do is build a building on our on our planet. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Um, what do we have? Do we have anything open here? We have a pop popping up here, so we're gonna build Some buildings here. Some cause adjacency effects to other buildings in neighboring towns. Right. Let us take this into consideration when constructing new facilities. So when he pops here, we're gonna have to have a building building. Um, what we might wanna do is do a mining network because this already gives us two minerals um, and this will give us, produces two minerals, so it should boost this. Now these little plus arrows, it's because this um, this building is giving bonuses to everything around it. Right now, uh, auto something monument, monument the first pioneers to venture into space. That could be cool to build maybe into something that doesn't have anything. But for now, why don't we go for minerals? We produce 10 and consume six, so that's good to know. We, we, so we're getting plus four. Yeah, let's go mining network here. Here we see a visual representation of the planet's surface divided into tiles. We already knew that. So this is going to build and it's going to take time. It's going to take 206 seconds, I guess. Uh, the next thing I want to do is build this. Science ships do not require a star base. It can be built planet side. Click on Canaria. It's like the spaceport tab. Then click on build. So we're going to go boom. Spaceport. The spaceport tab is where we view orbiting. Thank you. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and build ourselves a science vessel build and that's going to go ahead and build we can unpause zoom out and why don't we send off our little science vessel to continue on doing his thing so we'll go ahead and send him out to survey this system as well he should fly out relatively now quickly have begun exploring our neighboring stars it might be time to extend our reach a star base can be built around stars and surveyed systems to expand our borders allowing us to claim new regions of space with future technology, star bases can be upgraded to produce ships or other resources. For now, their main benefit lies in extending our borders. We, when we have uh, claimed a system with a star base, we can research and uh, we can build research and mining stations to exploit resources. Situation log updated. So what we want to do is we want we want to build something here. Um, and I don't know. If this is our construction ship, which is used to construct space stations. When an astronomical object, such as a planet, has been surveyed, we can order this ship to build a research station or a mining station to exploit any resources it may have. Okay. These ships are also used to build star bases and unclaimed systems. Well, that's what we want to do. But I can't, I can't remember how to build something here. So if I go out here, click here, right click here, it's not doing anything. Oh god, I can't read anything. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Select a construction ship. Click the build star base button in its fleet interface. What am I missing then? Obviously, other than clicking on that. I only have one construction ship? And what the hell is this? I do only have one construction ship. ISS Solgarian. Oh, that's a mining station. This is actually... I'm dumb. This is a mining station. I think it's a ship the entire goddamn time. Okay, this is what I need. So, what we're going to do is send him over here. And we're going to build a star base right out here. So this is going to cost us 100 minerals. So we'll be left with 72 and 75 influence. So in order to build something to pop our borders, it's actually going to cost us influence. That's what I'm talking about. That's technically, like, in my opinion, diplomacy um, and important. So let's go to Canaria for a second. Actually, let's go ahead and build ourselves. We don't have enough. Uh, double the science ships means double the fun. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I haven't been this excited since we completed the last assignment. Okay. We have a brand new science ship, but no scientist has been assigned to command it. My programming insists that I should point out the leaders tab lets us hire, dismiss, and assign idle governors, scientists, admirals, and generals. Research, physics research, society research, engineering, and ISS moon. So we need another scientist. Basically, we don't have a scientist piloting the ship. Um, one that, that's going to gain experience and get better over time. Um, so what we're going to do is recruit new one 
and pick one that's going to be useful for us. So it's going to cost us 200 energy credits. We don't have enough for it yet, but we will soon. So I'm going to leave the science vessel alone for now. And we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. Meanwhile, that's going to go off and do his thing. System surveyed, which we already knew. Construction suit. That's done. That's done. Okay. God, the music in this game is phenomenal, by the way. One of our science ships has just surveyed a world that will make an excellent candidate for our first colony. It is of the same planet class as our home world, so our colonists should be quite comfortable there. Okay, so we got a couple things here. So we're over here doing exploration, and uh, we found an, a planet over here worth worth habit uh, putting in there, um, and that's what this is. A healthy supply Let's let him of talk. minerals and energy credits is critical to the well-being of any interstellar power. We should take steps to increase our production of these resources. Right. I know that. Don't worry about that. Okay, so um, we've got this place here, which is a continental world, Asphos 3. However, this ship has run into something, something important. The ISS Muntadarian has made a startling find on Ashipso Ash Ash 3, the big planet. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Corneria. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Ephesus so are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. So, we have wildlife on this planet. Nothing sapient, um, no tribal species, nothing we can manipulate or, or abduct or any of that stuff. Um, but, useful uh, to know. And we will end up running into them eventually more and more as time goes on. So, he's, he's surveying this alien planet. Let's go ahead and unpause. So this thing is about to whip over here. And he's gonna swing in here. Oop. The Galactic Vulpine Technocracy is abuzz with news of the alien alien life found by the, the space station. While hardly intelligent by Vulpine standards, the uh, fascinations beings, fascinating beings defy easy classification hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. Very excited, everybody's really excited about it. So this guy's gonna pop in over here. And he's going to start building. He's going to send his drones out, and we're going to start... We're going to claim this little system as our own. Anomaly found. Okay. Next. <laughs> we found an anomaly. Um, let's jump over to the anomaly. Uh, it's a Fissos 2. Skill 1 star. Scanning the star unveils a small object in rapid orbit. Its small size and high velocity makes it difficult for our senses to isolate. Um, so basically, what, what can happen in this game is we can find anomalies. And they can rank from 1 star all the way up to 5. And that dictates how difficult it is going to be for our... Our particular people. We also realize there's going to be a failure risk here, uh, as well as an anomaly level here. Um, oh no, this is our guy. He's only one skill. The anomaly level is three. We can ignore it and come back to it later, or we can just risk it now um, and do it. Failure risk is, is never lower than 5%. We're going to go ahead and have him research it. We're going to say, go for it, dude. There, there are, Our vulpines are, are eager, are very, very eager for things. So we're going to go ahead and recruit a new scientist now. And we got to figure out which one we want. Because they all come with a, a trait. So they're all going to be one skilled. This guy's going to be maniacal. Research feed plus five, which is nice. However, he is also 42 years old. Not old, but older than the other two. Next, anomaly research speed is 35%. He's carefree. And then another maniacal. Uh, but he's 29. I think we're going to take the young maniacal guy. We're going to recruit him. And Virprim Den Valthrag, welcome. You are now here. And we're going to actually just send you out to survey. I could have him automatically do it. If I do that and unpause it, where Good. is he going to go? The scientist has assumed command of our new science ship and can now be sent off at our leisure to explore new systems. Okay. Construction has been finished on our new planetary building. Sweet. And it should now begin producing resources. Okay, that's our building. Cornelia is finished building. Uh, let's just send him out to the opposite direction. Let's head over here because there's a bunch of other things over here that I might want to check out. So I'll send him out to survey that station. Meanwhile, let's actually slow Surface things down. Tiles on habitable planets are sometimes blocked, yes. preventing their use. I got that. So I, I, that's what I explained about the yellow and black markers prior. Uh, all right. So we're he's still building over here. So it's doing all right. And then over here, which we can click, I'm curious how, how far along he is on his research. He's getting there. 
I just want to see, yeah, let's see what happens. I think he succeeded. We've gotten our, yeah, he gained a level out of that. Wow, beautiful. All right, the probability conundrum. We have gotten a report from science officer Seldarium del, del Vagors. It seems that a ceramic container in s is circling the star uh, Ashipos. Ap Ashif, Ashiso, Ashiso? I think that's how you say it, Ashiso. Most peculiar. It should obviously not be there, yet somehow it has managed to find its way into a close orbit. A special project can be issued to investigate the container and try to deduce how it ended up there. A conundrum worth investigating. Or, all questions don't have worthwhile answers, we can give ourselves just 40 influence. But, it's early game. Let's have some fun. A conundrum worth investigating. Excellent. Ooh. As you can see on the galaxy map, the borders of our empire have expanded to include the system where we built our new starbase. We have the ability to manually design new ships in the ship designer screen. This is a fairly... We'll worry about that another time. So, he's gained a level. Good job. Um, and then construction complete. He did that. Good job. So now that he's he's done that, and we're going to get some uh, energy out of this, we can get a mining station over it for the energy. Is there anything else worth grabbing here? I don't think so, so we might as well just build the mining station. And just get the energy out of this thing and then bounce out of this place. Really, all we really wanted here uh, was to claim it as our own. System survey concluded. Before things got a little out of, con out of hand. Alright, so he's done surveying this whole system. Let's send him over here. And have him survey over here. He's still doing that. We're doing alright over here. Um, I would like... A research station built in orbit of a planetary body will gather its physics, yeah. engineering, and society research data. Easy enough. Let's um let's go to Corneria. Let's head back to the spaceport. I'd like to build another construction vehicle. Though it might be a little early for that. Maybe not. Because well, after he's done building the uh this over here. I can just send him back to Lilat and have him build the things that we're missing. Oh, once he's done with this as well, I'm going to have him go back to this. Project concluded. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Cybrex. We have recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on J3L197. Incredibly, the civilization, which apparently referred to itself as the Cybrex, seems to have been made up of machines that were linked together in some sort of collective consciousness. The age of the artifacts indicated they were active some 600,000 years ago, in this portion of the galaxy at least, but we have learned nothing of their exact origins. According to a partial data fragment that our scientists managed to extract from one of the artifacts, the Cybrex at some point launched a crusade to destroy all sapient organic life in the galaxy for reasons unknown. And the fact that we're finding this near our home star system leads credence to the fact that we may have been we may have discovered a little technology that we weren't supposed to and weren't ready yet, and that's why we're just in space already. Interesting. Begins the precursors, the Cybrix event. Situation chain. log updated. Good to know. Okay. Let's keep moving. Um, that's where we're gonna have to go over here as well. I don't know if I want to grab this quite yet. I don't burn a ton of resources on grabbing another space station here yet. Let's see. Corneria, surface. Can we build? Build a pop? Select a mechanical pop model to destroy. Oh, we can put, we can build a robot there. Habitability plus 200, but he's just not good at outputting. We're just going to leave these guys there. What I want to build is kind of an, a monument. <laughs> I want to build one um, because I feel like these guys would be so damn proud of themselves for getting to space that they would build a monument to themselves. They're cocky, man. My vulpines are cocky. All right. Contact report. Remnants. Intelligent life taunts us with paint, uh, pointed absence, reads a popular uh, Newsnet post on Corneria. The people of the Galactic Vulpine Technocracy are apparently finding some humor in the fact that lower life forms of alien life are now a matter of public record. Potential, equ potential equals from other stars continue to elude us. Science officer uh, Virprim Delvang's report on the traces found in the da -da -da seemingly only add an ironic twist to the situation. So we're being a little cocky. Okay. Is he still building over here? No. So we can bring him back. Let's slow things down. I have a tendency of trying to blast through. But let's hit him back over here. And let's get a research Anomaly station. Found. 
Uh, risk level one, 20% risk. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization in this inhospitable rock. Yeah, go and research it. 100%. No question. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have him research that. That's our main guy, right? Over here. So we'll let him do that. How's things over here? Are you done? No, he's still going. There's a lot to go over here. We've got minerals here. No, nothing hospitable. Really not going to be hospitable, I doubt it. All, all these things look like they're not going to be hospitable over here. Toxic world. That's okay. We'll head back to Lilat real quick. Uh, I'm going to want to get a mining station over here as well. I basically want to deck out everything over here. If we go to our... our let's see what we got. Um, ship design. We can always take a look real quick. Ships in use within our empire are designed here. New hull sizes and components will be unlocked as we research new technologies. So basically, you can go min-maxi in this game and design your own ship with your own weapons and technology and engines and all that stuff. Or you can be like me, for the most part, and do an auto-complete. Not sure I'm going to fully auto-complete, but your ships are completely modular. Like, you can mess around with your ships and they're gorgeous. I think they look great. Um, and then just kind of do what you will with it. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, so we're going to want to, like I said, deck this place out and keep kind of researching. A little bit slow, a little bit mysterious, but exciting nonetheless. Actually, he, he just popped over. Broken Cybrex Warforms. The broken remains of two Cybrex Warforms, which is what we discovered before, have been discovered in orbit around Haldobana 1. They appear to have been destroyed in battle, but no debris from their adversary has been found. Either they were badly outmatched, or there is more to this engagement. Issue special project, broken... Cybrex war force. Situation log updated. Okay. We'll keep that in mind. We're going to have to deal with that special project at some point. So he's going to head over here, build this. Whoa. Comet sighted a fucking course. A small celestial object with pronounced gaseous and particulate tails was recently dis uh, observed in the Lila system. Its passing was uneventful. Acknowledged. What is this? Traditions available. We have enough unity to adopt a new tradition. The tradition screen this is new to me. The tradition trees available to our empire. A tradition tree must first be adopted before any traditions within it can be unlocked. Adopting a tradition tree or unlocking a specific tradition costs a certain amount of unity, and the price goes up as we unlock traditions and our empire grows. Okay, so we don't know. Okay, that actually will show us. Discovery, which might be good early game. Ooh. Diplomacy, also going to be good early game. Supremacy, probably not. Expansion, maybe. Domination, prosperity. This is mostly shipyard build speeds, building upkeep, etc., etc. Discovery might just be better for the beginning. Harmony, mind and body, kinship, and the like. But let's take a look at Discovery real quick. I'm really kind of hitting on this. A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our new worlds, we now map the brave space. Survey speed is 35%, so we survey way faster. We also can do... Research alternatives increased by one. The number of science and medical officers uh, has been increased throughout the fleet, organized into special science division. Yeah, let's grab discovery. Sure. Boom. Discovery. Beautiful. So he's going to keep doing this. Uh, he's going to build this, more or less. When this is built, we're going to move on. We've been going for an hour. Holy shit. Okay. We're going to stop here. This is going to be the beginnings of the Volpine Empire. Um, I'm excited to play more. I'm curious if you guys are excited to see more. If you are, let me know in the comment section below by hitting the like button. Your support means the world to me. And as always, I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.